I love me some Christmas time. And I was just talked about, made a video about my favorite Christmas movies and TV specials. And I talk about more Christmas stuff. Now, I'm the guy. I like Christmas so much. I put up my lights like Thanksgiving weekend. Like the day after Thanksgiving, if not the day of. Or as soon as I get back if I'm visiting someone. And I leave them up through January 5th. Because that's the 12th day of Christmas. And I want my 12 drummers drumming. 12 days of Christmas starts at Christmas. If you didn't know this, 12 days of Christmas start on Christmas Day. And it goes through January 5th. And on January 5th, my Christmas lights on my house are still on. And the trees are still up. Lights are on. Then I'll turn them off and probably take my time taking them down if it's during the week or not. Uh, and all you people who, who like to listen to Christmas music in October. Well, well, yeah, you start taking your decorations down immediately, right? Yeah, before New Year's, maybe New Year's Day. New Year's Day, they're not on anymore. Maybe New Year's Eve, their lights are still on. Yeah, I do the 12th day of Christmas. But I don't put my stuff up until after Thanksgiving because November before Thanksgiving, that is Thanksgiving time. All right, respect Thanksgiving. And it Christmas is special. You're not supposed to start putting your Christmas stuff up until after Thanksgiving. Maybe Thanksgiving Day. Now, the stores and stuff, you know, maybe you want to get your Christmas decorations in October and start early acquiring it. That's one thing. All right, but don't start listening to damn Christmas music on Halloween Day. And that's one thing that I hate about Christmas is Christmas music. You're at about 90% of Christmas music. I love Christmas, but God, Christmas music, 90% of it is god-awful garbage. And when you buy a Christmas album, this may not be quite as true today as it used to be, but it, it it's half-assed. The artists and performers on it, they don't care. What it is, what a Al holiday album is for is to round out your contract. You owe the uh, record company one more album, and you can't pull a Lou Reed. I think it was Lou Reed who did this, who owed the record company one more album and just recorded 30 minutes of static and said, yeah, here's your album. All right, get me out of my contract. You want to renegotiate your contract or go to another label, that's what the Christmas album is for. You, you're tired. You don't want to do it. But you got to do one more album. So you go to Christmas songs that are in the public domain. Just do your version of White Christmas. And slap it together. Maybe you put together, an, uh, you, you maybe you put one or two uh, original songs on there. That you just pull lyrics, Christmas lyrics out of a bucket. Throw them in there. And be like, okay, there's your Christmas song. They're garbage. So when you go buy your Christmas album from whoever, I'm not going to name any names because there's some people I actually like. Other than the Christmas albums. Uh, that's what you're getting. You're getting a half-assed piece of work that they didn't care about. Now, some may actually do care about it. Oh, I love Christmas. I'm going to do me a Christmas album. And what do you do? You do the same thing. You just pick a bunch of traditional Christmas songs that are in the public domain that you don't have to pay the rights for. And you really think your version of Fa La 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 or Chipmunks on a Roasting Fire is going to stand out? You really think your version of the three dozen other versions of White Christmas that people have heard or Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer or Frosty the Snowman, you think your, yeah, your version is the one that's going to stand out and people are going to remember? No, it's not. You it's more white noise, and that's why I hate hate them. Most of them are just so overly cheesy and, and uh, sappy saccharine. Is it, uh. Now, there are some good ones. Uh, I've heard Trace Atkins do Merry Christmas. That's the, uh, the Chestnuts on a Roasting Fire song. That was a good one. My, my brother likes Michael Bubble or Buble. Uh, who else did it? Oh, Audio Wade. It was a guy on uh, Stephen Crowder's show. He left, but he did Joy to the World. It was just him on a guitar singing Joy to the World. Very simple, not overdone, and it was fantastic. Then there's some original ones that are really good. Christmas in Dixie, Alabama. 
on point, hits the mark perfectly. Chrissy Hine in The Pretenders, she's freaking legendary on pretty much anything she does. 2,000 Miles, great Christmas song. Charlie Daniels, God Bless the Father. Uh, Steve Earle, Nothing But a Child. ACDC, Mistress for Christmas, great Christmas songs. But the standout, and I just did my annual concert psalm last weekend, Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Now, even if you're not someone like me who sees them every year, Every year. you got to see them in, in live, in show, once in your life. It's a bucket list thing. You want to talk about Christmas music? And they do non-Christmas stuff, too. They branched out. But they started with the Christmas stuff. That is transformative. Even when they do something that's a cover of an old traditional song, you, it's like, you'll remember it. It's like, whoa, that was something interesting. And like I said with Charlie Brown Christmas in, in another video, they don't preach it, then hit you over the head with the true meaning of Christmas, but they acknowledge the origin, the true meaning of Christmas, and the origins of Christmas. The first lines, the first words on the first track, on the first album that they put out, an angel came down one night to the earth, a mission from God to find out the worth of everything that his children had done that winter night, the birth of his son. Now, you just acknowledge the actual, real, true meaning and beginning and purpose of Christmas. And then they it's a rock opera, so they tell a story. Another one, uh, Mannheim Steamroller. They're fantastic. They're actually, Chip Davis of Mannheim Steamroller was the one who was like, uh, wanted to put down a holiday album and was told, no, 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 you don't want to do that because for all the reasons that I just explained. Uh, those are half-assed, those are crazy. But... He did his music, a Mannheim Steamroller, was so unique and so different, they didn't know how to categorize it. So the only thing he could think of was make it a holiday album. That at least puts it in a category in the uh, record store long before online stuff. So listen to some Mannheim Steamroller. Uh, Lindsey Sterling's got some good Christmas music, too. But the crowning jewel of all Christmas music... Trans-Siberian Orchestra. If you don't know who they are, go check them out. Merry Christmas. Be excellent to each other. Long live the Republican Sixth Semper Tyrannus.